certainly thank God for the deacons and devotional service that they have rendered. Amen. We Amen. thank God for Reverend Fisher and that beautiful Sunday school lesson that he taught. Amen. And a praise and worship. Amen. 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 Bringing us those wonderful songs. And certainly we want to thank Jesus thank for Amen. everything that he has done. Everything. In our All life. the time. Yes, yes. Man. We must admit, amen, there's nothing left out of oh, man. Oh, everything covers what? Everything. Amen. There's nothing what? Left out. Amen. amen. But we just have to trust God, amen, that he's going to do what he says he's going to do yeah, in amen. our lives. See, our problem is not that God can't do it. Our problem is that we don't have the faith that he's going to believe what he said he's going to do. Our second problem is, amen, believing that God has to do everything that he's promised to do in our time frame, which is not true. See, God has a plan for our lives, and oftentimes we have a plan in our life, for our life, that contradicts the plan that God has for our life. So there's a conflict. And then we blame God, amen, for the conflict, amen. But God doesn't make adjustments. We are the one that have to what, make the adjustments in our life to God's what? We are for our life. Therein, amen, comes the problem. We're always in turmoil because we will not yield and submit ourselves to the will that God has for in our life. It's not God's fault. It's our fault, amen, for not allowing ourselves to be submissive to what he wants to do in our lives. Uh, have I got a witness? Yeah. You see, we say we have faith. And faith in God means we rely on him and depend upon his, rel his reliability. Is that right? Yeah. And, and, and we must recognize in our mind, amen, that God is bigger, that God is bigger that God is bigger than any of our problems. Have we got a witness up in here? Amen. Secondly, we have to understand that God is stronger than any of our struggles. He is masterful in handling all of our mess up. See, there's nothing God can't fix, even though we created a mess. Amen. He'll what? help us get through the messes that we want. We make. Next, amen, we have to understand that he has the wisdom to short circuit our worries. In other words, he has everything that we need. Amen. And if you know you have a father that has everything that you need, why are you worried? Mm. Amen. Why are you depressing and distressing? Yes. If you truly believe that God owns, amen, the cattle of a thousand hills. Why aren't you embracing that? Uh -huh. okay, have I got to look this up again? Yeah, amen. amen. That's not God's fault because you don't believe what he tells you. Ooh, come that, on. That's your fault, really? Yeah. And you need to question yourself. Is why I don't believe what God what, is telling me in his word Ooh. and in his wisdom. Yeah. That's and, deep. And, and we have to understand that God remains constant. God doesn't change. He that's remains right. constant. Throughout all the seasons of our life, we are young, we grow older, we have old age setting in. But God, amen, is constant through all of the seasons in our life because He changes what? Nah. Changes mind. We fluctuate and we embrace every fad and every trend that comes, amen, into the world, amen. We invite it into our lives and our mind. But God, what, is the same yesterday, today, and what? Forevermore. And when we align ourselves with God in every season of our life, we find, amen, that we are victorious over what? Whatever enemy or affliction that comes against us. Have I got a witness right now? Because he remains what? The constant sign. in every season of our life. And what you're going through now, amen, is common to what? All of mankind. 
What you're seeing now, amen, has been done before, amen. It's just, amen, projected through the media, amen, and everybody knows about it. And we got to put this up in here. There's nothing new under the sun. Right. The same thing they had back in the older days, amen, they're having right now, amen. We're just seeing more of it. Why are we seeing more of it? Because there's more people, amen, performing, amen, the evil in this world. Yeah. Huh? In every season, amen, he deals with the adversities and sins of what? Mankind. Amen. Have I got a witness at it? He judged in every what? Every era, amen, in human existence, God was what? Involved in all of that. So he knows what's going on. Wow. And he has what? He has an end in mind. Yeah. Next, God can be trusted to act on our behalf in all situations. I didn't say some situations, I said what? All, all situations. Amen. God is working. And, and the problem is that we don't see him uh -huh. working, so we get discomforted yeah. in what? Yeah. Our spirit. Yeah. Because we are people, amen, have to see something. Right. Amen. But seeing is not believing. Believing what is seeing in what the spiritual realm. Yeah. We have to believe that God is going to do it, amen, before we can even see it happen. Yeah. Have I got yeah. We don't only really want to see something, amen. We first have to what? Believe something yeah. before we begin to yeah. see this in the Yeah. Amen. Amen. My brothers and sisters, at this very troubling time in history, don't become frustrated. Yeah. Don't stop fighting. Don't be fearful. Don't give up. Just remember, God is with us. And the same God you trust on a sunny day can be trusted when your peace is good. I got a witness. The same God you can trust when you're victorious can be trusted when you're going through trials and tribulations. David said in the 23rd Psalm, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Have I got to work this up in here? Do you feel me today? Do you understand what we're saying today? Amen. We had a beautiful Sunday school lesson, and I want to read you one verse out of the text, amen, that I want to. You wrap the head around. Uh -huh. Luke 15 and verse 17. Right. And it says, And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father have bread enough and to spare? And I perish with hunger. Right. Verse 18. I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. I want to stop right there on those two scriptures. And I want to talk to you about the value of recognition. Okay. The value of recognition, the value of recognition. And, and, and that word recognition means coming to the awareness of a situation. Uh, have I got a witness? And all of a sudden, man, you understand what the situation is. You understand what the person is saying. You understand what they meant. Uh, the motive, or you understand what the outcome or the results of something is. Amen. Right. Recognition it means that I see something. I understand something. I heard something. I've researched something. And I have clarity, what? On that something. And every day, each of us make decisions that affect our lives. Mm -hmm. and the lives of others right. in a positive 
or a negative way. You're right. Have, have I got a witness? Yeah. See, all the time we think, well, I'm, I'm doing my own thing. No, you, you, when you do your own thing, your own thing affects somebody else. You're right. Absolutely. Amen. Especially if you have a relationship with that other person, amen. What you do, amen, can bother somebody else. Yeah. I can walk down, amen, that aisle right there, and if I wave my hand enough, I will stir up some dust, and someone may get that dust in your nose and start sneezing. Amen. We affect people, amen, either voluntarily or involuntarily by the things that we do. Have I got a witness? I can change a lane on the highway while I'm driving, amen, and veer into somebody else's lane, amen, and cause them to veer off and have a wreck, and I can keep going down the road, but I had a negative effect upon somebody else. Yeah. So therefore, we need to be aware of where we are, what we're doing, and how we affect the lives of individuals. Because we're not only responsible for our lives, we're responsible for the lives of others. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Have I got a witness? Yes, and that means you can't be sleep at the wheel. Yeah. You have to be awake, amen. You have to be woke to what's going on yeah. around you at any given time. Have I got a witness? And you can't be so wrapped up in you, amen, that you forget about everybody else. Second was about. 
about a lost coin. The coin was lost by accident. Have I got a witness? Hey, Amen. I've had money fall out of my pocket by accident. I left my keys in there somewhere by accident. It wasn't my attention, but I just messed up in there. For some reason, I wasn't focused on what I should have been focused on. It was an accident. But it said the woman, amen, swept around, looked around until what? They found it. Because while the coin, amen, even though it was lost, still had what? Value. I could have bottled up a $50 bill, amen, step all on it, amen, and waste up on it, amen, but somebody will pick it up, walk it, wash it off, amen, and turn it in, amen, because it's still what? Redeemable. If you stop on that ball, amen, and it's all of them, you are still what? Redeemable. God just washes you in his word, amen, and you're ready to want to be redeemed. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. We all mess up. Yeah. We all make mistakes. We all stumble and fall. And God will what? Clean us up. Yeah. We allow him to do it. But the problem, the problem with the prodigal son, and man, it wasn't ignorance. It wasn't an accident. He made up his mind. It was willful that he rejected the father. And the father represents God. He rejected God that had everything what? That he knew. Because he what? He overestimated his ability to succeed without his father's how about God in with us? How many know it all do we have here? How many do we have here today that think they can do it all by himself? I don't need a man. I don't need a woman. I don't need a job. I don't need a house. I live up under the bridge. Know it all. Do it all. But God of witness, he overestimated his ability to succeed without his father's help. And some of us here today are doing our own thing. God has told you what you need to do in his word. I have told you from the pulpit. Your friends and relatives have shared with you the word of God and the will of God, but you reject that. Because there's a picture of pleasure that's painted by the enemy. And you feel like you don't have to do what the Father says. You can operate without him. How about that witness? And for those who are trying, tell me, how's it working out? Tell me, how is that working out? Secondly, he underestimated the troubles this world can present. Mm. Uh, am I right about it? Because if the world will paint a picture, you won't be all right. Fast cars, beautiful homes, lovely women, handsome <laughs> men. Huh? Oh, the enticing drinks. A little marijuana. You know, Mary always wants her. Smoker, then she yeah. and they got pills on everything. Pills, man, pills, I have no sign, no key, and they got all kind of pills for you. They can eat the pop of pills and solve your problem. That's what the world tells you. Have I got a witness? Amen. But you have to, amen, have the ability to sort through all of that stuff to understand what truly what works, amen, and what God truly tells you is needed what in your life. See, because the world will have you running around like a dog chasing his own tail. But have you out there running after cars and knowing, amen, when you can't do anything with it when you catch it? Right, have I got a witness? Have I got a witness? I mean, the world, amen, will tell you. Oh, amen. That you Superman and Superwoman. And 
get a reality of what? Sex me. He didn't realize that friends will leave. I forgot what, look, look, look what this boy did. He went and told his father, Father, give me. The boy, he ain't worked with, worked with nothing but food, shelter, and clothing his whole life. Never had a real job, amen, outside of what? Working what? Around the house and the fields for his father. He said, give me, amen, what I'm old. Amen. But he wasn't old nothing, amen, because the way it was set up, amen, he didn't get any money until his father died. And then he wouldn't get the what? Two thirds of what? The ownership, amen. His older brother would get the what? The lion's share. But he asked for, amen, something that he didn't deserve. Uh -huh. In other words, he was saying to his father, I wish you were dead so I can get that money. Uh, I'm about to wonder something. Never take what he was telling his dad. I wish you were dead so I can get your money. You got kids today, amen. Come on, come on. Yeah. Word about one day, amen, when mom and daddy don't leave behind for them what to enjoy. Yeah.
Yeah. For some reason, he had in his mind that there were money trees in the world. <laughs> that all he had to do was find the money tree and move some dollars off of it. That, that's what he was thought in his mind. He didn't realize, hey, amen, that once that a bank account hits zero, you can't take no more money out of it. Hey, amen. And once that pocketbook, hey, amen, runs out, you look at it, there's nothing in it, it's blank, it's empty. It's empty. Hey, amen, something needs to be put in there, or you, you're not going to eat. Come on, come on. Or you're not going to have shelter. Yeah, yeah. But every day he woke up with his father, hey, amen, he had food on his table. Yeah, yeah. He had shelter over his head. Come on, man. And the guy went to that corner back. He had water to what to the bath in. Ah. You see, he didn't understand that the sands of time get shaky. Have I got a witness? And the sands of time, amen, are moved by the winds of time. Amen. They may be in one place one day, amen. You may see a sand dune, amen. The next day, amen, it may be gone. That's the way his money was. He had money in his pocket and he was living lavish. Some of us are living lavish right now. Haven't thought anything about a savings account. Or haven't thought anything about a rainy day. I haven't got a witness. I see that diamond ring. I got the buy. I see that fine car. Amen. I got a buy and everything and then live in it. Amen. We, 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 we just get we, we just get Overwhelmed in our mind by what the pleasures of what. You right, you right. I looked in my closet the other day and I, I said, man, there's about 25 suits in there. You ain't got the one body. Yeah. And then I, I, I checked the shoes. I got all kinds of shoes and I said, what? man, I looked in the amount of watch, hey man, it still had a tag on. I said, oh, man, man. you lost your mind. What are you thinking? Have I got a witness? In other words, sometimes God had to bring us back to what our senses are yeah. And he allowed what? His family to bring him what? Back to what? His sins. Have I got a witness? See, God will allow problems to come in your life. God will allow, amen, you to get sick sometimes. God will allow you to have pain in your body. God will allow that good paying job to pull the doors on you. God will allow those things to bring you back to your senses that you may have recognition. That you're too far out. Have I got a witness? And, and, and so, the funny thing about us, we can be looking at something, amen. And just like some little boy, amen, and when he starts swimming, amen, he closes the bank and he looks and he see, he looks out there and he sees the birds and everything. He wants to swim a little further. Uh -huh. Then he gets so far out, amen, he can't make it back to the shore. Uh -huh. God lets us know, amen, you're getting too far out. Yeah. And we are start allowing things to happen in our life to right. make us what? Come back to what? The peaceful shore. Am I right about that? But sometimes we don't recognize, we ignore that. Yeah. Yeah. I think that all it takes is a shark. Yeah. Yeah. Close to the, the beaches and the so right. Have I got a witness? Oh, they swimming out there, oh, they can go away, yeah. man. They try to reach a specific point. And then all of a sudden, they see that little pin come up in the water, and that pin it says, time to turn around. That's right. And God does the same thing in our life. He has made it allow something to rise up to tell us it's time what? to come back home to the what? To the Father. Rock bottom. In order to get them to look to him. 
Yeah. Yet there is still hope. There's still hope. Even though we messed up for redemption and reconciliation. Mm -hmm. Look what it says in verse. Well, I'm going to tell you about what he was getting ready to do. This is a Jewish boy. Okay. And he had some rules and regulations, amen, about being a Jew. When his mother ran out, uh, amen, he wasted it all. He, a mighty family came up and he went and he said to himself, oh, I ain't got no money. Mm -hmm. Time for me to get a job. Yeah. Why is it, amen, that well, we have a little money in our pocket, amen. We are employed, amen. We, we spend all our money, and you know, after all the money gone, you know, we finally realize it's time to get a job. Amen. When the money began to dwindle, he should have said to himself, you know, it's not going to last very long. But see, he didn't have any experience in the world. He thought those same friends, amen, was going to take care of him like he took care of them, uh, amen, when he had the money. But it doesn't work that way. Amen. Nobody loves you when you're down and out. All they, all they do is say, you need a ride? You hey, you need a ride? They say, no, 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 no. I ain't got no ride for you. Can I, can I can you even give a few dollars? I ain't got no money for you. I had money for you. No, I ain't got money for you. That's the way the world is. Amen. The world has no integrity. Yeah, yeah. It'll take all that you have and then forget about you when you're in need. That's what the world will do. Amen. But look at verse number 17. It said that he was, now I'm going to move it up a little bit. Right. So the famine came, he had to get a job. Mm -hmm. He went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, which was a Jew to the Gentile. And he spent him into the fields to feed the swine. You see how the enemy in this yeah. world will degrade you, will rob you of your integrity, to try to change, amen, the rules and regulations that you have grown up with. He had to hide himself to a Gentile who had swine. And being around the pig, amen, was it was a terrible thing for a Jewish boy. Have I got a witness to even come close to him? <laughs> but he was out there, what, having to go feed because that was all that he had to what, exist on. Yeah. As a matter of fact, that he probably spent everything he had on trying to find a place to stay, amen. And it said he went out eating the husk yeah. or pig food, yeah. amen. <laughs> if he had, he came to a point where he even thought about it. <coughs> so this guy was having a hard time, wasn't he? Yeah. Why is it that we have to come to the end of our work? Mm. That we have to be in total desperation before we would realize that we need God, well, uh, that we need Jesus wow. in our lives. Uh, yeah. He said, he, and he thought about it. Because no man would give him nothing. But the beauty of recognition is that God had to humble him yeah. so much. He had no option, no other choice but God. Yeah. Have I got a witness here? Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes God has allowed that to happen in our life to, to break our stubbornness, yeah. to tear down our pride and our arrogance, amen, to help us to realize that we have no option yeah. Yeah. but Him. And said, and when? Mm -hmm. You gotta address that. Mm -hmm. Because it didn't happen to have all that other stuff happen to him. See, if he had a still been in the father's house, but the father had made him stay there, put him in chains, locked him up, and released him only when he wanted to go out and there would have been what still messed up. Mm -hmm. Because he had to have that period in his life where he made a justice. From his will right. to the will of God. Right. Right. And God will lock you up yeah. in a situation until you come up to your senses right. Right. when it's not your will anymore. Right. Right. 
but it's his will in your life. God painted a picture for him, didn't he? In the pig pen, amen, in the riotous living, amen, being down and out. Look what he said. Look what he says. Look what he says. Look what he says. Pay close attention. Wrap your mind around what he said in verse number 17. And when, after all of that, his mind changed. How about God a witness? Have you ever had an epiphany in your life? Something that calls you in your life that calls you to change the direction that you were going in. He had a epiphany. Yeah, yeah. A life changing event that turned him around. Yeah. The Bible said, and when he came to himself, it took all of that. It's time, it's time for reflection, my brothers and sisters. All right. When it took all of that. What is it going to take in your life to come to yourself? His father couldn't bring him to himself. His mother couldn't bring him to himself. His uncle, his aunt, his sisters and brothers, his friends couldn't bring him to himself. It was the decision that he alone had to make. Have I got a witness? You have to make up your mind. That you're gonna come out of the darkness into the marvelous light. You have to make up in your mind that you're gonna have to give up the things of this world for the things of heaven. It's a mind changing event. You have to make up your mind you're gonna come out of your pride, stubbornness, and arrogance and submit your will to and humble yourself under his mighty name Amen. that he may exalt you in due what season in his time I know what you want what you think you want to be but that's not necessarily where you need to be mm -hmm. at this point in your life yeah you're right because he's a God of seasons yeah. Yeah. he knows what you're ready for yeah. you think you know what you're ready for uh -huh. and, and that may not be what yeah. what you need in your life have you ever got into a situation that you just knew a man was going to work in your favor? I'm not going to ask how many divorcees we have here today. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going right. to ask that because I already know you You just knew you loved that person. <laughs> yeah. Boy, you're going to plan your life forever with that person. Uh -huh. 90 days later, I'm separate with it. Amen. Well, you got to make career choices. You just you going to be a football player, star. Amen. Playing with a guy with a Yeah, two years later. Man, it's been two years. See, we, we think we have some ideas and concepts. Yeah. But that may not be the will of God for your life. But he came to himself. He had a recognition of what he was. And what he was doing was not conducive to his well-being. He remembered how it was in his life. The time, he remembered the time that he was satisfied. That he was safe, that he was stable, and when he was secure. He remembered those times. Have you ever sit back and thought about times in your life where things were just wonderful? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And then you said to yourself, I sure would like what to get back to that period of time. Mm -hmm. You may not get to that exact period of the time, but you can find yourself safe. Mm -hmm. Secure, yeah, yeah, satisfied, right, in the hands of Jesus. Amen. Have I got a witness? Amen. See, it was a matter of His will, not the Father's will. His way and not the Father's way. He had a conflict of wills, and when He adjusted, 
his will to the Father's will, he realized all the advantage I had with God. My brothers and sisters, we didn't need to do likewise. We, we get caught up in the things of this world and, and all of the trappings, amen. And, and, and we forget about how good God has been to us. Well, Pastor, how good has God been to us? Well, he woke you up this morning. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, how has God been good to us? Well, he woke you up this morning. How has good God been to us? He woke you up this morning. That was the starting point of everything in your life. Is that he woke you up this morning. And everything else after that point began to fall in place. Those who are 
unforgiven. The Bible said he came to himself. He had a spiritual awakening. Someone here today need to wake up. Need to decide that where you are now is not where God needs for you to be. He said he came to himself. It was his decision to leave, and it had to be his decision to come back. Amen. I've got a witness now. How many of you are running out with people begging them mm. to come back? Come on, man. They made a decision to leave. Yeah. They need to make a decision to come back. So when they make that decision, they can come back in the right mind. Have I got a witness? Yeah. If you make That's a decision right. for them, they're not going to come back with the right mindset. Because they're going to feel like if you yield it to their will, uh -huh. rather than the will of what? Of God. Yeah, yeah. You ever allow that, that, that to happen in your family, man? Yeah. Go, baby, come on back. I don't want you out there like that. Please, please. Come on back. You go get them. Bring them back to the house and everything. And they continue those same crazy ways. Oh, Lord. Wow, that's what the devil plans in our mind. Oh, Knowledge. He, he operates on your mind mm. to tell you that you treated them wrong and they mm. not by going after them. Amen. But you did the right thing because they have to make their mind up. They want to pray about coming back and be restored back into the family. See, God never changes his rules and regulations to for, for us what? To come back to him. He just applies pressure. That I got with me. He just allows pressure. When they call, say, I need $20, I need $50. What are you going to do with it? I need something to eat. Okay, I'll bring you some food. I'll go to the store and bring it to you. <laughs> Amen. But I'm not going to send you $50. Right. Have I got a Yeah. See, God gives you wisdom on how to deal with certain situations. That's right. Because otherwise, we become what? Enablers in what? People sin. Have mm -hmm. I got a witness and people will try to control you, Amen. And with the terrible ideas that they have in their mind. Check this out. The Father. And all that good with you. The father didn't change. Mm -mm. The son did. And when he got home, the same rules, the same principles were in place. Mm -hmm. He came to himself. Mm -hmm. Some do and some don't. He made up his mind that I don't have to leave him like this. I have an awesome father. Have a wonderful home. You don't have to live without God's blessings in your life. You need to come to Him today and have a come to Jesus moment. I don't want to share this with you, no one leave you alone. Mm -hmm. This young man has some concepts to get in his house. Mm -hmm. Amen. Sometimes open them. I've been out all day running errands. And, and, and we, we oftentimes will come in the house and not notice, amen, that we had an insect, amen, flying around. And when we walked in, amen, all of a sudden some fly had flown by our, our head and our ears, amen, and gotten into our house, amen. And then we began to notice that a fly has entered into the house. We run and we cover the open containers, cover stuff up, amen. Whereas this vile and nasty and destructive disease carrying creature cannot contaminate anything in the house. I run and grab the, the fly swatter, amen, and, and I go around the, the, uh, the house, amen, trying to catch up with the fly, trying to. Amen. To destroy it, to get it out. Amen. I, I, I want him to leave my house no matter which way it has to be. He can fly out or he can die in. It, it, doesn't, it, it doesn't make any difference. He has to get yeah, out yeah, because I know that he is what? Destructive. Yeah, yeah. Have I got a witness? Yeah. I, I know it will cause damage, it will mess up the food in the house. Amen. It may cause a disease and I might what? Get in my body. Why is it that we allow nasty, unclean, disease, destructive thoughts to come into our and occupy our spiritual heart yeah. and our spiritual mind and do not bring to get away? Yeah, yeah. We don't have to leave them there. We can dismiss them. We can cover them. Unto me. Yeah. We 
Jesus Christ, the mighty man of God. He came down to 42 generations. He saw that we had been like the prodigal son and the check and the father. Yeah. He was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wrapped in swaddling clothing, laid in the heart of a manger. He walked the dusty streets of Jerusalem, open blinded eyes, unstopped, deaf ears, called the lame man to walk and the blind man to see and the dead man to rise from the grave. Have I got a witness? Have I got a witness? He came to redeem us. He came to reconcile us. He came to restore us to our proper place. And the Bible said, many, many rejected him. Rejected him. We don't want you. We don't want what you are offering to the world. We want to do our own thing. We want to have our own way. We want to be the way we want to be. They took him and hung him on an old rugged cross, put spikes in his hands and his feet, a crown of thorns on his head. They pierced him in his side. And out came the blood, the cleansing blood yeah, yeah. of Jesus Christ. Thank you, the redeeming blood of Jesus Christ. Yeah. The blood that washes away all of our sins. Yes. The blood that makes us white and snow. Out of the body Thank of Christ, you, Lord. Yeah. the sacrificial lamb of God. He redeemed us. He paid the price for our sins. He reconciled us to the Father. Then he laid his head in the box of his shoulder and he died. And he looked up before he did that. And he said to his Father, it is yes. See, it's time. Restoration is available. Yeah. Redemption is available. Yeah. Reconciliation is available. It is finished. It is done. Yeah. They gave him in a bottle to lay it all my Friday. All day Saturday for the yeah. Sunday morning, he stepped out of the grave victorious. Yeah. Yeah. He said, oh, great. Where's your victory? Oh, death, where's your sting? Yeah, yeah. You don't even have to worry about death anymore. Yeah. Don't have to worry about the grave because it won't keep you. Yeah. Death won't keep you yeah. because you arise. Just like he rose from the grave. Yes, yes, yes. When he comes back, stop in the air. The dead in Christ shall rise first, and those who are still alive shall be changed. In the twinkling of an eye. See, we're not going to have to deal with this forever when we get it with that. Because we're going to be free from it one way or the other. Either we're going to die and go be with him, or he's going to come and get us. Have I got a witness? You don't have to have no two wings to fly nowhere. He's going to come and he's going to get you. Amen. I know you can't get it, amen, if you're going to fly from earth to heaven, amen, with two wings. Come on, now. he's going to come back yeah. to get us. Will you be ready? Will you be prepared? Don't be like the prodigal son initially. Be like him in his finality when he finally came to his senses. The power of recognition. Mm -hmm. We need to understand, recognize what God is saying to us because it benefits our lives in a great way. May God bless you. Amen. 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 Amen.
with the right word. Chapter, verse 13 says, And not many days after the younger son of Yahweh all together, and took his journey into a foreign country, and there wasted his suffering in righteous living. If you read that too fast, you might be reading righteous living. But it said, it's R I O T, right, right, just living. That means he wasn't living righteous. He wasn't living right. He felt like he was living right. He had all this money that he had inherited. But he wasn't spreading right. He was living on life. Like there were things going on in his life around him that was causing distress in his life, not only in his life, but all those that came in contact with him. There was he was bringing it back into the house. Amen. If you think about a life, what does it do? It causes consequences. It causes destruction. And you think about all the other words that could have been in you. Uh, redemption. Uh, righteous recompense, but he said right because he wasn't living right. And when we live a righteous life, that's what the thing that we can expect. And it, it, what this pastor talked about, how his family was trying to help him and show him the right way to live, he kept thinking righteous. And we told us in our lives, we were feeling like that now, even though Pastor just finished reading this scripture, he just finished teaching his lesson. We're thinking about when we leave there's somebody that's done us wrong. <laughs> somebody that's done us wrong. We're not, we're not even thinking about treating them right until something happens in our life. And then we'll go to them. We're going to be right. There's, there's a song that says, I just want to be right. Why can't you be right now? Why do you have to wait until something happens in your life? Come on, uh, whoever's going to sing this song. Why do you have to wait until something's going wrong?